there I'm the groovy skeleton Here to sing you a song And tell you some news about Morbius the movie There will be no Morbius sequel Oh, oh hi! You caught me having a nightmare. Speaking of nightmares, let's talk about the Golden Age superhero, Nightmare. Hello, welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. We always have fun taking a look at Golden Age superheroes, and today, I think I found a real gem for you today. Nightmare and Sleepy, there's some heroes that quickly go off the rails, but I also think this is a rare example of an idea that's close to working. In fact, with a few different choices, I could really see Nightmare and Sleepy still being around today. But with all that said, let's take a look at some of these bonkers stories where Nightmare and Sleepy go up against villains like a baseball team that wants to steal diamonds and a criminal mastermind of checkers. Nightmare and Sleepy debuted in Clue Comics No. 1 from January of 1943. Publisher Hillman Periodicals, like many other comic publishers of the day, saw the huge success of Superman and got into the superhero game in 1941 and continued to make comics up through 1953. Some of their more famous creations were Airboy and also the first swamp monster, The Heap. One thing Nightmare and Sleepy had going for them were a pair of talented cartoonists as their creators. Nightmare and Sleepy were created by artists Alan Mandel and Dan Barry. Alan worked on popular characters like Novelty Press's Blue Bolt and by 1941, frequently teamed up with Dan Barry. Dan had a lengthy career drawing characters from Airboy to Flash Gordon to the Predator for Dark Horse Comics. These two invented the non-superpowered characters Nightmare and Sleepy, very much in the mold of Batman and Robin or Captain America and Bucky. The heroes debuted in Clue Comics alongside some fairly other bizarre heroes like the Boy King, an orphaned king from a fictional European country who controlled a giant made of stone. His arch enemy was a Nazi with extendable fists. There was also Microface, who had a normal sized face, but also had a microphone in his mask that let him throw his voice. He was essentially Jones from the Police Academy movies, tricking villains into thinking they heard sounds from all around them. Look at this list of complaints. And I quote you directly, sir, when I say... <laughs> the NPR podcast Planet Money recently revived this public domain character. Nightmare and Sleepy have a lot of wild elements that aren't really bad ideas. They just don't quite fit together smoothly. They fit together more like if you spilled a bunch of glue all over a bunch of different leftovers. The first Nightmare and Sleepy story starts with a big panel teasing what the story will cover, like most Golden Age stories did. We then cut to a futuristic city with the unlikely name Perfect Town, because Metropolis was taken, you see. There we meet our heroes in their civilian identities. Bob White is a professional wrestler, and he uses his young friend Terry Wake as his promoter. Super boring names. Clark Kent, Peter Parker, those are memorable. Bob White is generic. Let's apply this level of creativity to a Mad Lib. We'd end up with, a vacation is when you take a trip to an okay place with your all right family. Usually, you go to some place that is near a thing or up on a place. Anyway, I bet you're wondering why a professional wrestler has a kid for a manager. Terry asks just that question, and Bob explains it's so that unscrupulous promoters don't take advantage of him. Future Issues mentioned that even with having a kid as his manager, they get stiffed on payment. So, we know that Bob isn't necessarily the smartest hero, because he thinks a shifty promoter would be less likely to scam a kid than an adult. 
We then cut to Bob's match, and we see that Bob has a very strange way of wrestling. While everyone else is in boots and tights, Bob wrestles in a suit and tie. Wrestling is littered with bad gimmicks for their superstars, evil dentists, minotaurs, pretending Robocop is real and having him help out with a match. But at least those are sort of interesting. A man in a business suit? Like I said, this comic has a lot of interesting ideas, they just don't all fit together smoothly. I think that the idea of a professional wrestler fighting crime after his matches actually sounds kind of cool. If he went around town in a luchador mask fighting crime, I don't know, that sounds cool to me. That's just not the Bob White way, though. While Bob is wrestling, the story's criminal appears. He kidnaps the town's mayor and reveals that he calls himself the Checker and forces the mayor to play a game of checkers. Every time the mayor loses, Checker will attack the city, which implies if the mayor was better at this little kid's game, the Checker would be willing to just not commit crimes. Bob and Terry overhear on the radio that there are crimes going on around town, and presumably they've never heard of such a thing because this inspires them to deal with it themselves. The Checker and his men hold a bus terminal hostage. Bob dresses like a skeleton, and Terry sort of dresses like a brightly colored Grim Reaper. The gimmick to all of this is that Bob's skeleton suit is glow-in-the-dark, which gives the criminals a good scare. The criminals shout out that it's a nightmare! Checker quickly pulls a lever and flushes them down through the sewer. However, when the heroes finally get out of the poop and pee, Bob declares that they've earned new names, Nightmare and Sleepy. Where did Sleepy come from? That's all Bob, I guess. It's far from the most intimidating superhero name. It implies a certain malaise or laziness, but Terry just goes with it. Well, most of the issues imply he's gone with it since they're titled Nightmare and Sleepy, except for one issue that puts Sleepy in quotation marks, implying that's not really his real name. Maybe Sleepy wrote that issue. Regardless, Nightmare and Sleepy quickly return and beat up Checker and his men. Most issues just have the two heroes make quick work out of generic thugs. There aren't any recurring villains, and few have a gimmick. They do go up against two separate villains who happen to be Undertakers. A coincidence like that is probably due to the fact that clearly new artists took over the strip regularly. So, there are no supporting characters introduced. Nightmare and Sleepy do go up against a few colorful enemies. One is a team of bank robbers who dress up like baseball players. Issue 3 hints at Nightmare and Sleepy having to battle a corpse that steals people's faces, which does sound interesting. Nightmare faces a killer only to see his own face. Other victims also see their faces on the killer. Perhaps it's no surprise, then, that when Nightmare and Sleepy finally confront the villain, it turns out that he simply wears a mirror on his face, which tricked everyone into thinking their faces were being stolen. My personal favorite mystery involves a town that believes gravity has gone awry. Nightmare and Sleepy encounter confused people either forced to walk on their hands or stuck in a squatting position. Ultimately, they learn that the villain was actually tying ropes to people without them noticing. Sadly, Nightmare and Sleepy never use any cool wrestling moves. It's all just punches and diving headfirst into people's butts. Still, I like Nightmare's costume, and the idea of heroes that would be roaming from town to town and encountering different crimes, having a wrestling background, those all sound interesting. But, because the creative team keeps changing, they don't really build on any of those elements. In fact, after three or four issues, they pretty much stop mentioning that Bob is a professional wrestler, and it seems like they're just fighting crime full-time as Nightmare and Sleepy. By issue seven, unfortunately, they've gotten rid of the coolest part. They've changed Nightmare's costume. I would argue that the most iconic element of Nightmare and Sleepy is Bob's glow-in-the-dark skeleton outfit. But, without explanation, Bob wears a much more generic costume by issue 7. It's a blue and red affair which I'd compare to Captain America, except he also has pointy ears like Batman. 
Since the comic follows an adult and kid sidekick, it becomes pretty obvious that this comic wore its influences right on the sleeve. The comic became very repetitive very quickly. Nightmare frequently gets knocked out when he's hit from behind during his initial confrontation with an enemy, but by the end, Nightmare and Sleepy beat up the crooks without too much trouble and are beloved by the police for doing so. But the story doesn't end there. All things considered, the costume was a minor edit compared to what came next. After the first 12 issues of the comic, Sleepy just goes away and it goes through some pretty bonkers changes. It only lasted two more issues, but it is the most delightfully insane thing I've read in quite a while. For year two of Clue Comics, we are introduced to a new character, Nosy McGinnis. Nosy is a detective that likes cheap cigars. In fact, he likes them so cheap, he can't find a cheap enough one at a store, and he makes them himself. He learns that when he smokes a cigar, it makes Nightmare appear. Nightmare helpfully explains that whenever Nosy smokes his homemade cigar, he will appear to him to help out, but he'll be gone once the cigar goes out. Soon enough, Nosy has investigated some criminals and gotten himself tied up. The crime boss tries Nosy's cheap cigar and spits it out disgusted. But Nightmare has been summoned and begins assaulting the crooks. Nosy realizes his only hope of getting free is to crawl across the floor and smoke his cigar so that Nightmare can continue beating people up. That's right, this comic became a vivid endorsement for smoking. I used to think that one of the craziest ways to summon a hero was the 90s Marvel comic Sleepwalker, in that the protagonist, Rick, would have to fall asleep to get Sleepwalker to be free and, and help save the day. Oh no, there's trouble! I better fall asleep. But now, I think I like Nosy McGinnis. Oh no, trouble! I better get smoking. There was a second four-page story featuring Nosy again tricking a criminal into smoking his cigar so that Nightmare could knock him out. And that was the unceremonious end to Nightmare. How he became trapped in somebody's cigars was never explained. Whatever happened to Sleepy was also never explained. But those first five or six issues of Clue Comics feature some pretty entertaining Golden Age superheroing. A solid character design and an interesting gimmick that would force the heroes to move to new locations to solve new problems regularly. Unfortunately, it was never exploited properly. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode. This one was a blast. It's spooky season. I found a hero that wears a skeleton costume. Perfect. Um, I've got some other episodes coming up, but I do want to let you know I'm going to the New York Comic Con in a week. So that impacts how much time I've got. So the episodes I might make for this month might be a little smaller. But I definitely have some big ideas that I know will appeal to a wide swath of the comic reading populace, you know, uh, deep dives into what DC's New 52 was, some acclaimed indie comics, taking a look at some popular manga, all sorts of really cool episodes coming up. So I hope you'll stick with me. If you haven't already, please consider hitting subscribe. That really helps the channel. And just so you know, I also have a weekly live show on another channel that I call Pros and Cons. That's on Monday afternoon. So hopefully you'll consider checking that out. Anyway, there's some really cool stuff coming up this month is all I wanted to say. And until I see you next time, please remember, keep reading comics. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider hitting like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, there are merchandise links beneath the YouTube video, and you can always hit join on YouTube or visit Comic Tropes on Patreon to get access to special perks.